All right, this video will go over the answer key to the acceleration freefall quiz review worksheet. So make sure you uh, listen to this video carefully as I go through each problem because your quiz will include questions just like this. All right, so you have a velocity versus time graph first. This shows you the velocity of an object over 10 seconds. So you can see the velocity decreases. So this shows whatever object this is slows down during portion A, then moves with a constant velocity dur during portion B, and then it slows down at an even faster rate um, during portion C, and then at 10 seconds, the object is stopped. It has a velocity of zero. So if you want to calculate the acceleration during any portion on this graph, you're just finding the slope. So during portion A, Remember, slope is rise over run, change in y over change in x. Pick two points on the graph and find change in y, change in x. So I just picked the first point and the last point during section A. So the first point, try to focus it better here. D up here at 10 drops to six. That's a change of four. And then it, on the y or the x-axis, it's four seconds. So change in y is four, change in x is four, and then it's a negative slope. So your answer comes out to four over four, which is negative one meters per second squared. During portion B, four to seven seconds here, um, there's no slope. There's no change in y. There's no change in velocity meaning the object's moving at a constant velocity. That means no acceleration during portion B. All right. Questions three and four, you just have to calculate slope again. So for number three, portion A, you're looking at a change of eight in four seconds. So that slope would be positive two meters per second squared. And then Portion B, you're looking at a change of six. I don't know why I put a negative there. That's a positive change of six over six seconds. So let's just fix this here. All of that should be positive. That's why you double check your work. Sometimes you catch an error. All right, number five. And the, the equations are given to you here. These are the two equations we've used for acceleration. So the first one is just your normal acceleration equation for things moving horizontally on the road um, or on a flat surface. I don't know why the focusing is so bad. All right, and then the other one is for objects in free fall because the A, instead of an A here, we have a G over here. So the G stands for the acceleration of gravity, which is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So when something is falling in the air or being thrown upwards, you're going to use the G value. You're going to use this equation instead of this one. Really, they're the same things rearranged, except instead of an A, we have a G. So on this one, a, a truck moving on the ground, you're just going to use your normal acceleration equation. So they give you a VI and a VF, slows from negative 20 meters per second to negative 5. The negative just means the truck is moving in a negative direction, so maybe south or west in 3 seconds. So here are my known values. Here's the equation I'm going to use. Got to be careful with the minus sign there, and your minus is here. So it's VF, which is negative 5, minus VI, which is negative 20. So when you subtract a negative, you end up adding a positive. So we get 15 over 3 seconds is positive 5 meters per second squared. All right, on the back. All right, over here, you're on fairway drive. So again, you're driving on a road horizontal motion. So you're going to use that original acceleration equation. You see a pedestrian in the crosswalk, so you need to stop quickly. So a full stop means that your final velocity will be zero. You decelerate at a rate of negative 2.4 meters per second squared. 
I see that meters per second squared, that means that's an acceleration. So I'm going to put that in the A box. And then originally you're driving at 10.7 meters per second. So that's your VI. You're looking for time. Here's the equation rearranged to solve for time. You plug in our values. You have two negative signs that are going to cancel out when you divide. So you get about 4.46 seconds. Number seven, you're out roaming the halls at 0.3 meters per second. There's your VI. Ms. McGuire comes around the corner, so you need to accelerate. You accelerate at 0.7 meters per second squared. That squared means this is an A. For eight seconds is a time. And then by then, so that signifies afterwards, after you've already accelerated, so we're looking for Vf. How fast are you moving? Here's the original equation. Here is the equation rearranged to solve for Vf. Plug in Vi, A, and T, and you get about positive 5.9 meters per second. All right, 8, 9, and 10, we get into our free fall problems because um, 8, 9, and 10 talk about objects that are in the air. So the word thrown, that's a, um, a keyword, a context clue, meaning G is involved, gravity. So that's one of our knowns. It's always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Ball is thrown upwards into the air with an initial velocity of positive 0.9 or 9.6 meters per second and then at what time will the ball reach its maximum height so we know that maximum height is another context clue um, to let us know that we need to set VF as zero because an object will hit a velocity of zero just for a, a, a instant at, um, before it can turn around and come back down so you're setting the I is 9.6, the F is zero. You have G, you need to solve for T. Here's the free fall equation. Here it is rearranged to solve for T. So you end up dividing negative 9.6 by negative 9.8 to get about one, about one second. All right, this next one I haven't done yet, so we'll do it together. Upon realizing your Instagram photo does not have as many likes as you'd like, you you throw, that's a key word, that means air, so G is involved, I'm going to put that right into my known variables box. Third story win window. The phone reaches a velocity of negative 19.6 meters per second in 1.3 seconds. So I see a time there. Now is this VI or VF? Well, it says the phone reaches. So after the 1.3 seconds, it reaches a velocity. So that's going to be a VF. And another way I would know that that's VF is because it asks for VI. What was the initial velocity of the phone? So that's my unknown. So I'm going to use my free fall equation. Here it is. And if I want to solve for VI, I'm going to subtract over the GT. And now I can plug in my values. So VF, or sorry, VI equals VF, which is negative 19.6 minus g, which is negative 9.8, times t, which is 1.3. And I don't have a calculator in front of me. Hold on. So I'm going to break this down into two steps. 9.8 times 1.3. This portion right here is negative 12.74. I'm going to bring over my 19.6. Okay, so now I have to do negative 19.6 minus negative 12.74. So that ends up being plus a positive. So 
So my final answer is negative 6.86 meters per second. And it makes sense that the velocity is negative. So when you throw the phone out the window, it's moving downwards. So the velocity here is about negative 7, 6.86. And then after 1.3 seconds, it's, it's sped up. It's just 19.6. So that, that answer makes sense there. All right, lastly, Gaston. Any Disney fans in here? Um, falls off the cliff. So we assume he's just dropped. He's, he's kind of just falling without an initial velocity. While fighting with a beast, how fast will Gaston be traveling after five seconds? So there's a time, he's in the air, so we know G is involved. VI was zero, we're looking for VF. So here's the free fall equations already set up for us to solve for VF. There's VI zero plus GT, so really you're just multiplying 9.8 times five, you get negative 49 meters per second. So if you can solve every single one of these problems perfectly, you'll be all right for the quiz.